Hello makers and welcome back to another vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I am currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, building furniture these days, whatever creative rabbit hole I may be going down, as well as a look at what I am creating for my small business where I make project bags and curate tools for makers like you. My hope each week is to encourage and inspire you to nourish your own creativity, to live slowly and with intention, and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you are well, that you've had a wonderful week. I am doing well. It has been another doozy of a week. Um, there's, it, it, yeah, it started out with a, a visit from AAA, so let's just say <laughs> that. All is well, but lots to catch up on in the lifey chat to hear at the end of the vlog. But making wise, it's been really wonderful. I have a half object, uh, one of the socks of my current sock project to share with you that is all finished, just uh, bound off just a little bit ago. And um, I wanted to show my new sewing setup because I had my first shop update this week and this new space. If you're new here, I just recently moved, moved house. So I wanted to share that with you and kind of my takeaways and how I think the workflow is going there. So without further ado, if you haven't already grabbed your knitting or your stitching, a lovely beverage and let's catch up. First up this week, I finished a half object, if you will, a hoe. <laughs> uh, the first sock of a new pair of socks that I've been working on. Um, this is with yarn by Hugh Loco. Links to everything I chat about are down in the description box below. Um, this is from a sock set uh, by Hugh Loco, uh, the chick Backyard Chicken Collection from 2018 uh, and it is the cream leg bar so this is the main color and then it came with two contrasting minis uh, 20 grams each and the main skein is the standard 100 gram um, fingering weight yarn and I use this color that don't have um, colorway names that I could tell on the ball band but I call this the terracotta colorway and this kind of this pale gray yellow for the heel. I did the shadow wrap heel, which I'll also have links down below to the tutorial that I follow for doing a contrasting color uh, without dropping the main color yarn. Fabulous tutorial. Um, and yeah, they're just, it's been really lovely to have a pair of socks on the needles. This is my first new cast on since moving a little over a month ago now just a few days past a month marker which is banana pants <laughs> um and i'm eager to cast on the next sock i'm gonna do that on the plane tomorrow because i'm actually gonna be uh out of town for almost a week uh, on a business trip so i'm gonna bring my knitting with me i have it here in this little bag, this is a, one of my bags for my shop from several, a couple of years ago, I think. Uh, so I've got it all packed up and ready to go. I've got to finish packing here in a bit. And I'm going to like be rebellious and switch it up and have this color be the toe and the cuff and have this uh, and have this color be the heel for the second sock. I thought it'd be really fun and mom is all game for it. I used a two by two rib, and then I mentioned I did the Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. I think I mentioned, if not, then that's what I did there, which is a lovely stretchy bind off like that, which is my go-to and mom loves that as well. So yeah, I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles, which is my go-to magic loop. Um, it does leave, the way that I knit anyway, it does leave a little bit of a ladder there, uh, but that goes away once they're, they start to get worn. Of course, I could block them as well, <laughs> but yeah. But while I'm eager to cast on the next sock, I am itching to cast a new project 
on you know something I don't know maybe a sweater I'm thinking I definitely want to do a sweater and maybe something that we can all knit along together I know a lot of you uh, let me know after I'd asked a couple of vlogs ago that you would totally be down for a cowl which I haven't hosted in some time so now that I'm kind of quite almost settled here I'm getting there I'm getting closer I think I'll be announcing that pretty soon once I settle on a pattern um, but I'm kind of you know I have I have some beautiful shawls that I've made over the years I have plenty of cowls but I am just wanting to just grab some yarn and knit something new some lace work or something I've never knit anything by Stephen West um, but I don't know I think finally not necessarily my style but maybe my intention and kind of want and desire for just knitting with yarn it fits the bill with like a Stephen West pattern you know all the like the beautiful different grids and textures and everything that he has in his shawls and stuff so I think I think the time might be nigh for that I think every time at the end of summer too leading into fall which we're at right now here in the Norm northern hemisphere I always want to cast on a shawl or something just something you know like a good accessory to shake it up you know so anyway all of that to say is my my uh my favorites and my queue are starting to grow again over on Ravelry <laughs> Um, and I've been adding to it and I also want to make a few baby knits for some friends who've had some babies and you might be watching hi how are you doing <laughs> um, but no spoilers there until they're they are received but yeah so that is what I knit on this week now my collar top which I unveiled the finished object last week I uh, need to finish well I'll just be honest with y'all I didn't block it <laughs> I need to finish it up and block it I didn't get to it on the weekend last weekend like I said I would and that is because I found that my car was completely dead <laughs> um, the weekend was just a flurry of you know I had my godparents visited and I was hanging out with family and stuff and the start of the week started out with a visit from AAA. My car battery was just completely dead. I'm not sure if I mentioned here, I think I mentioned with my Patreon peeps, some behind the scenes tea a little bit over there that on the day of my move in a month ago, I literally, the movers had just pulled away and I went down to the garage where I was kind of double parked cause I um, didn't have a parking spot at that point. Uh, but I had access to my garage and I went to say okay I'm gonna go to Target and get a few things like a shower curtain because I didn't have a shower curtain and I needed a shower at that point and my car wouldn't start it was on the fritz and so I ended up the day like that I moved in for about four hours waiting on a tow truck then they couldn't fit in the garage and they ended up jumping my car because they were like it's your battery my car started and then I took it to the Nissan dealership a couple of weeks later or about a week later and they were like it's fine you're good and I was like okay and then needless to say this past weekend I just happened to go down and see make sure that my car was locked and nothing crickets it was deader than a doornail <laughs> so I because we had guests and family friends over and godparents and stuff I was like I'm gonna deal with this first thing Monday morning luckily AAA was able to come out and um, they had a battery in stock and they replaced it and the guy was so awesome he showed me like yes it is it's actually not just registering so I'm a little tiffed at my Nissan dealership for that but who knows but it's working great now but it just yeah blocking and letting it dry and also I was preparing for a shop update so I had stuff cut and was it too much <laughs> I had to throw up the white flag also I really want to be I have a really good juicy summary of the project because 
I, I feel like I kind of rush that after I finish something um, and or it's been a while since I've just really been very thoughtful about the yarn and and looking back and sharing footage from the start to the end and having just a really good summary wrap up of a project, especially one that was so fulfilling and beautiful to make, the quality by Pippin Pin. So, so stay tuned for that, that is coming. So that was a little bit of a lifey update already, but the big thing this week was that I set up my sewing space, my little studio back here, and it was in full production once again for the first time, and it feels like so long for the shop. I had my first shop update. Thank you all so much who came out and got some bags. I'm going to be stocking the shop throughout the month of August with um, back stock or extra stock rather drawstring and sweater bags for the most part from the one or two or sometimes even less uh, extra fabric pieces that I have from past collections so this week was the first uh, kind of update if you will of kind of filling a few things in the shop uh, and so I was making all of those bags and got them all out and um, I think let me toss you to Joanna from the past and I'll give you a full tour of how I have it all set up initially here. All right, here is the inaugural sewing day. It's mainly just going to be a test drive of this new setup. We'll see how the flow goes. So I kind of created an L shaped desk pulling out my sewing table over here. And this will also be like where it becomes a dining room table too. That way I can plug in the machine easily to the power strip down there. And then also go between work stuff and sewing stuff. I put out this extra leaf just to get an idea if I wanna access it. This used to be just always up against the wall in the studio. A studio apartment um, but it's nice that I have the ability to and the room to have this out again so that I can sew place pieces on there a lot more easily because before I was having to stand up and put them over on the cutting room table so now I think there'll be a little bit better flow I'm trying out my ironing board here, which is so close to where <laughs> I sew, which is great. That's what I want. It used to be tucked away over by my bedroom in my bedroom nook in my studio apartment. So now I can sew like a zipper and just walk one step and iron the zipper so then I can come back and top stitch the zipper. So that's kind of mind boggling. <laughs> So we're going to see how this works. And then the cutting room table, uh, cutting room table, the cutting table will be here. Obviously it's stationed here and I'll grab pieces and kind of have like a nice flow going. So I'll be sure to continue to report back how it goes. I definitely need a new lamp. I think I'm going to place my order on Amazon today <laughs> to see if I can get one before I leave for conference. Otherwise I'll wait but wow, my mind is just kind of blown. I have only had my shop in the studio apartment, so it's kind of amazing to see all my things in a new space, which is was what I was dreaming for, so yay. I filmed that last Sunday, so a little less than a week ago, and now after finishing and sewing everything, it really is a dream. I'm feeling so, so grateful for having this space and being able to have that set up. It just worked just how I had hoped. I was easily able to sew, place pieces on the table with that extra leaf out, and just stand up and turn and be at my ironing board. Um, I did get a new lamp. I got a tortier lamp, which one of you, or a couple of you actually, um, when I mentioned a few vlogs ago that I was looking for a floor lamp for that studio space with a little bit more light and everything. So I found one on Amazon, it was great. It arrived and was a dream and dims as well, it's wonderful. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's really when you, so in production, every little step, even if it's literally a couple of footsteps 
that you decrease here and there and the process makes all the difference in the world in terms of not only time but also the ease and wear and tear on your body because it's a very physical thing to do doing that many bags and repetitive steps and everything um, I found that especially when I got my new sewing machine about a year ago now which is banana pants but um uh my juki uh sewing machine has like a thread cutter on the foot pedal and i have like a little knee um, pe um foot razor upper and downer <laughs> thing um and those two things alone saved so much time and eat made things flow and have so much more ease and that's the case with how this is all set up so I'll definitely, as I said, like we'll report back, continue to report how things are, but I think this is gonna be my go-to setup going forward. It's so great. Another thing that happened this week is I got the green chair that I've been talking about for a month now. It had been delayed for a while and it is the chair of my dreams. It is this gorgeous green velvet chair that I got from Article where I also got this beautiful couch as well. Um, some of you were like, has the chair arrived yet? Has the chair arrived yet? I'm looking at you, James. <laughs> and it has arrived. It is just perfect for knitting and stitching. It's exactly what I had hoped it would be. It has very low arms, so um, it's great for, you know, moving your elbows this is how apparently this is how I knit <laughs> or for stitching and for reading of course I might get like another little ottoman over there I'm kind of on the fence because I have like an ottoman here on my couch that I can bring over but I love it and my little lamp I'm looking at right now my little lamp is perfect the fiddleback stool that my grandfather made when he was in junior high, I think. So back in the 30s, 1930s, I should say. I'm going to have to clarify that pretty soon here. Ooh. <laughs> um, is It just looks perfect with the wood of that chair. I just, yeah, I love it. And I unpacked my book box finally too. That was the last uh, box from the move that I needed to unpack. Um, and I've got everything kind of set up and and stationed where it's going to be and I can add to it. There's a little bit of room to add to it. And a lot of my books are, I'm looking at it, are over by that chair. I've put all of my to be read TBR books over there. I'm on the hunt for a little bookcase. Um, yeah, I might need a bigger bookcase. <laughs> But for right now, it kind of looks cool to have the books stacked up there. So I'm not in any rush. I kind of want to wait until I definitely find, you know, the bookcase that really speaks to me. And then I do have one more piece of furniture that I need to put together. And I'll do that when I get back from my conference. Uh, and that is the shelving that I think I shared last vlog um, that I got at Target um, and it goes over the toilet and it has like a couple of shelves above the toilet and then even more going down the right side if you're facing the toilet <laughs> on the right side. So I'm eager to put that together when I get back and get a few little baskets here and there to kind of put my stuff away there. And that'll free up the temporary storage I have for my toiletries and stuff um, so that I can use it for shop stuff and put it in my closet eventually. So still getting settled here and there, getting into, I think I've got like a com mega commute rhythm kind of down. I think I kind of knew this conference was coming up, so I knew I probably wouldn't get really truly settled until once I get back from this um, trip and probably a week after that. So I'm in the home stretch. <laughs> it feels like of this major transition in life that I could, I'm beaming from. It's just, I was talking to my mom the other day and, um, she was like, it just feels so natural for you to be up here and where you're at. And I was like, yeah, this feels like the most, I don't know, I, the more, the most at home that I have felt and grounded that I have felt um, probably in 12, 14 years um, for a variety of reasons. But I think just the timing was right. I just am in a place where I know what I want, what I don't want, which is so freeing. 
I don't know, have you all experienced that? It's just wonderful. And then just to be so close to family after the several years that we've had, you know, just to have that comfort of knowing I can get to them and they can get to me with how the world is, you know, it's just wonderful. Very grateful. So on that high note, <laughs> I'm going to leave it here for this week. I'd love to hear what you all are making. Please do share down in the comments below. And I will see you all next week. And I'll probably have lots of footage and fun things to share for my trip to Denver. Yay! All right. Talk to you all soon. <laughs>